Good evening. Today we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Please see the bulletin for the diocese announcement regarding additional COVID-19 mitigation efforts. At all masses next weekend, there will be a special blessing of children and their backpacks. See the bulletin for details. Please see the bulletin for Father Dan's article with details about his m next monthly talk, which will be held on Tuesday, August the 24th. The parish offices will be closed this Monday in honor of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The special papers that you were given, please take them home. Do not leave them in the pew since they are only used for tonight's Mass. Thank you. In a special way, we remember the soul of Barbara Uhazy at this Mass. Our gathering hymn for today's Mass is Immaculate Mary, found in your worship aid. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm sure you notice right away that I'm wearing a mask, and you heard the announcement that there are some changes to the requirements and everything. Liturgical ministers are going to be required to wear masks into the future, we are encouraging but not mandating anyone, regardless of whether they've been vaccinated or not, to wear a mask at Mass. That's up to you in the end, but it's not much, but it's a small thing. It's kind of unfortunate because this is the weekend that the bishops of Pennsylvania have said now the obligation of going to Mass is reinstated, so it feels like, okay, we took one step forward and now we're taking one step backward, but isn't that just life? So. But here we are gathered together on this great solemnity of Our Lady, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and how good it is that we are here to celebrate this blessed day. And so my brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who, looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raised her to this grace, that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surpassing glory, grant through her prayers that, saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. You may be wondering why there's different readings in your little handout than there is in the bulletin. Today is a solemnity of such an occasion that it actually has a proper vigil. Sometimes we use the word vigil to mean all of the Saturday night Masses, but actually they're just anticipated Sunday Masses. This is a vigil with its own prayers, with its own readings. And I want you to be attentive to these readings because they don't actually seem to make sense for a celebration of Our Lady. So I encourage you to read and to ponder, and I'll do my best to explain why these readings today. reading from the first book of Chronicles. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord to the place that he had prepared for it. David also called together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. The Levites bore the ark of God on their shoulders with poles as Moses had ordained according to the word of the Lord. David commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their kinsmen as chanters, to play on musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals, and to make a loud sound of rejoicing. They brought in the ark of God and set it within the tent which David had pitched for it. Then they offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When David had finished offering up the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Behold, we 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when that which is mortar clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. He replied, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, what do you think about the readings? Kind of confusing? Maybe a little random? This Gospel seems almost to be like a slap in the face. Right, we hear this woman, blessed is your mother, blessed is the woman who bore you. And Jesus is saying, rather, blessed is the one who hears the word of God and observes it. Okay, I mean, this is sacred scripture, but why, on a day when we celebrate Mary, do we hear this reading? And what do readings one and two have to do with anything? They seem to be very unusual. Well, let's start with that first reading. We hear about how David takes the Ark of the Covenant and brings it up into the meeting tent. And let's remember what that Ark of the Covenant was. It goes back to Moses, when Moses is on Mount Sinai and God gives to him not only the Ten Commandments, but also the entirety of the law, the law that the Israelites were to follow. And God places them on the stone tablets, and Moses brings them down from the mountain, and what did he do with them? They build the ark. And Moses is given very specific instructions by God about what this ark is to look like, how it is to be constructed. 
and it was made of the finest material that they had, the purest of the precious metals, the gold, the silver, the bronze. And what they do is they build this ark, this container, out of gold, and they place the law, the Word of God inside, and then they put poles on it and they carry it around with them all through the desert as they're making their way to the Promised Land. And every time they stop and they put the ark in a tent, in a meeting tent, and when that happens, the presence of God in the pillar of cloud that's leading them around comes down upon the meeting tent. And that's where God resides with His people through the desert. And Moses was allowed to come into the meeting tent and speak to God there. And it was said that when he would come out, his face was radiant, bright, and people couldn't even look at him, so they had to cover his face because he was in the presence of God. And of course, eventually, the Israelites make their way into the Promised Land, and eventually we come to the time of the kings, and David's son Solomon builds the temple. And in the temple, they place the Ark of the Covenant. This Ark that they've been carrying around finally has a home. And they put it in the center of the temple, the Holy of Holies, and for the Israelites, that is where God lives with His people. He has chosen to dwell in the holy city, Jerusalem, this chosen people. I want you to think for a second. What happened when Mary had the angel Gabriel visit her? In a sense, it's very much the same. Like Moses, she received the Word of God, and she became the Ark of the New Covenant. She became the dwelling place for the presence of God. And for the nine months that she bore Jesus in her womb, she was that ark, the one who bore the presence of God. And reflecting on it in that way, now we can start to think about the Gospel. The woman there says, Blessed is the one who bore you. Blessed is your mother. And Jesus says, rather, blessed is the one who receives the Word of God and carries it out. Mary received the Word of God, did she not? When she said to the angel Gabriel, let it be done to me according to your Word, she observes the law of God. She carries it out, and so she is deemed worthy to bear the Word of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. She becomes the new Ark of the Covenant. And then that leads us into our responsorial psalm, that response that we said, Go up, Lord, to your place of rest with the Ark of your Covenant. And so after Jesus ascends into heaven, who follows? The Ark, His mother, Mary. Lifted up to heaven, assumed body and soul at the moment of her death. And now the second reading makes sense too. We hear this passage from Corinthians 
that St. Paul says about where, O oh death, is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in victory because the sting of death is sin. And the one who was preserved from sin, Mary our mother, so that she could be that perfect tabernacle, that perfect Ark of the Covenant, worthy of carrying the Word of God. Now she needs not taste death. And for that she is lifted up into heaven, body and soul. And now the readings make sense when we understand why we honor Mary so much as Catholics. It's not simply because she was the mother of God, but because she listened to the Word of God and observed it perfectly. That is why we laud her. That is why she was taken up into heaven where she intercedes for us, her children. And my brothers and sisters, this is a nice little reflection, theological reflection on Mary, of course, but what does that mean for us? Why should we care? Well, I want you to think about what we do when we come to Mass as Catholics. We hear the Word of God, And then we become, in a way, an ark, a tabernacle for the presence of God. We hear the Word of God and we allow it to reside within us. And then when we come forward to receive the Eucharist, God makes His dwelling place within our very bodies, we become an ark, a tabernacle, a temple for the Holy Spirit. And this should give us great pause for the greatness that is bestowed upon us who are not worthy of that. And we say those words, don't we, right before we come forward? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, that you should enter into my body. I am not worthy of this. I have not been made perfect. I am not the purest gold. I am not worthy of this. And my brothers and sisters, this should give us a great deal of awe that God is willing to come and dwell within our hearts. So great is His love for us that He chooses us imperfect beings to dwell with us. It should propel us forward. It should inspire us to prepare a worthy dwelling place for Him, to go out into the world and to draw closer to God, to purify our hearts, to make them like the gold of the ark, like the gold of the tabernacle that contains the body and blood of our Lord. It should inspire us to be more like Mary, who was without sin and who now resides in heaven with her Son and prays for us, intercedes for us. May we be inspired by her to draw closer to her Son we who are not Jesus' mother or brother or sisters in the flesh, but who are his mother, his brothers, and his sisters when we do the will of God in our lives. 
May we be inspired to go out and to be better, to become saints, to be made holy, to be made perfect, so that God has given a perfect dwelling place in our hearts that we might more worthily bear Him in our bodies when we come forward for the Eucharist. And may Mary, our mother, help us, pray for us, ask her son to draw us close so that we might be made more worthy every day. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift our voices and hearts in prayer and ask God to hear and answer our petitions. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that Mary may inspire us by her constant faith and her willing yes to do what the Lord has asked. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the mighty and powerful of every nation will lift up those who are lowly and abandoned, especially women and children, suffering abuse. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that the gentle Queen of Peace may reign in every home as a model of faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, that they may respond generously and willingly if the Lord calls them to ordination, consecrated life, or lay ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the poor, the sick, the addicted, and bereaved, that through the intercession of Mary, they may experience healing and peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see Mary's assumption into heaven a sign of the promised glory for our faithful departed. Let us pray 
to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear and answer these prayers that we make. May you hear them through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, and we make them all through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God, that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, 
command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Servant's Song, found in your worship aid. What do you want of me, Lord? Where do you want me to serve? praises I am your song Jesus Jesus you are the Lord Jesus Jesus My deepest self, sing your songs in me.
my darkness. You are my strength when I'm weary. You give me sight when I'm blinded. Come see for me. Almighty Father, since we cannot all receive the sacrament of communion together at this time, we ask you to help us to see and express the communion of our church and to unite our hearts with the heart of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us now express our desire to receive the Eucharist by praying the following prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having partaken of this heavenly table, we beseech your mercy, Lord our God, that we who honor the assumption of the Mother of God may be freed from every threat of harm, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. 
may you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Hail Holy Queen, found in your worship aid. Oh. 